It's four degrees outside, but I'm not even cold because Vikings are impervious to the cold. But seriously, guys, welcome to the channel. Great to have you back again. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so so you get notifications in your feed for our further videos. Now, what's happening right now is very interesting because for a minute there, I thought the Biden administration might have been on the right track, bringing in new funding for not just EVs, but electrification across the United States, green energy, etc., etc. But it seems as though they've hit a snag and they've decided to make major concessions in the amount of money they were originally going to spend on this rollout, which is very sad to see. I was initially very excited by what the Biden administration were doing, and it appears as though they aren't as committed to the cause as what I first thought. So China's electric car strategy is starting to go global, but the US is now lagging behind. So guys, remember this key fact. While California-based Tesla captured popular attention for electric cars, national policy in Beijing encouraged the launch of several rivals in China, the world's largest automaker. Now remember, several rivals, well, one of the biggest is, you may not have thought of it this way, it's actually CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer. CATL are being very aggressive in their battery manufacturing and they plan on bringing in new sodium batteries which will enable them to free up much of their lithium ion phosphate batteries for cars while the sodium batteries will be used for energy storage. Obviously there's a metric shit ton of sodium on the planet and therefore there isn't a need for scarcity. While some people believe there isn't an issue with the amount of lithium in the world, for the next couple of years there is in the short term. In the long term, I agree there won't be. In the short term, however, there is. So this new development from CATL should hopefully, well, not hopefully, should allow them to actually exceed their advantage over the other battery makers in the world, such as LG Chem and Panasonic. But remember, who is the fourth largest battery manufacturer in the world? And also one of the largest EV manufacturers in the world, it's BYD. Many people, especially Americans, haven't even heard of BYD, and yet in many ways, they are a very similar company to Tesla. Now let's not forget Neo, Liotto, Xpeng, Geely with Volvo and Polestar, and their new EV only brand, GAC, SAIC, MG, BAIC, and the list goes on and 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 on. Now over the next five years, I anticipate that Chinese players across the EV supply chain will aggressively enter the overseas market. If you're not aware of that, that's happening right now. Cars from BYD and NIO are going all over the world. Norway, Australia, the UK, New Zealand, Europe, and this is just the start of an enormous expansion. Now, my thoughts were echoed by UBS analysts who said, over the next five years, we anticipate Chinese players across the EV supply chain to very, very aggressively enter the overseas market. Now, of course, EVs were once a fringe item in glo the global energy market, which was centered around oil. But very, very quickly, EVs are becoming a part of a potential new ecosystem that includes self-driving cars and ride hailing, said Daniel Yergin, Vice Chairman at IHS Market. Now guys, believe it or not, Tesla, GM, and Alphabet are not the only companies working on automation in cars. There's a number of Chinese companies also working in this area. Let's be frank here. In a future driven by 100% EV vehicles, China is poised to dominate this market if the US does not very quickly transform its automotive industry in the coming years. I believe every automaker except for Toyota has admitted to the fact that the future of vehicles is EV. So what is the problem here? Well, the problem is that American automakers aren't quickly enough going to transition to EVs, therefore they will be disrupted. By 2030, the game will be over. And unfortunately, most American companies are not planning to have even 50% of their cars EV by 2030, which puts them in serious trouble. Now, obviously California-based Tesla captured popular attention for electric cars, and national policy in Beijing encouraged the launch of several rivals in China, the world's largest auto market. 
already sales of electric cars and other new energy vehicles hit a record over the last quarter in 2021 in China. And even Tesla launched a factory there last year, which is enormous and was built in record time. And they are now selling cars from China to Europe and Southeast Asia and Australia and New Zealand, other countries. So who is really manufacturing those cars? Well, Tesla is, but Tesla is in China. So where is the workforce coming for, those, for that enormous Tesla factory? It's coming from China. Who is developing those skills? The Chinese. What's going to happen when those employees from that Tesla factory in China are poached by other companies? They bring that expertise elsewhere. It was a very smart move from China to make Tesla the only foreign-owned auto company who technically owns their entire company in China. So what's powering this electric revolution? Well, powering it all really, let's be honest, are the electric batteries, of which two Chinese companies that I mentioned earlier, Contemporary Amperex Technology, CATL, and BYD account for about a third of the global market. Just those two account for a third of the global market, according to UBS. Now, all six of the world's largest major battery manufacturers identified by UBS are Asian. Now, very interestingly, very recently, CATL signed, well, it believed that CATL has signed an agreement with Tesla for an 80 gigawatt hour factory to be built near Gigafactory Shanghai by CATL, which will provide Tesla with 80 gigawatt, gigawatt hours worth of batteries every year. Now, currently, that is larger than CATL's entire battery production of 2020. Larger than that. And all those batteries just going to Tesla in China. You can imagine the enormous number of cars Tesla will need to build to actually use all those batteries. What does that say about what Tesla is planning to do in China? Over the next five years, we anticipate Chinese players across the EV supply chain to aggressively enter the overseas market, UBS analysts wrote in a note on Wednesday. We believe China materials costs are lower than the overseas market. If this advantage can sustain, China could realize a cost advantage over ex-China players. And this is what I've been saying for a long time. China's costs are lower than other players. And I'm not just talking about their costs in terms of materials, which is what UBS is talking about. I'm talking about the costs across the entire process of actually producing the product. Because the Chinese government isn't just giving incentives, they're basically saying, have the land, take it, build the factory, you don't even need to. They barely need to apply for permits. The Chinese government is being very aggressive and bullish. They want their market, their Chinese automotive market to take over the world. And they're not letting Republicans or anyone else stand in their way. Now, the researchers from UBS expect CATL to increase its share of the ex-China market from 2% in 2019 to 14% in 2025, helped by hyperbolic growth of electric vehicles in Europe. And honestly, need I add this, all over the world. I believe by 2025, 50% of the entire automotive market will be electric. China's leadership in EVs could give it global leadership in electric vehicles in the global marketplace, Jurgen, Vice Chairman at IHS Marquee, told CNBC in a phone interview last month. Obviously, the EVs are important for China, not only because of oil demand, not only because of pollution, but also competitive market strength. Many things are starting to be seen through this new lens of competition, Jurgen said. And if the US really goes big on EVs, Inevitably, there will be more of a drive to have the supply chain in the US, but it's not separate from the overall trade tensions between the two most important economies in the world. Now, you may be thinking, how do cars and GDP growth relate? Well, it's far, far greater and more significant than you think. The US and China have locked in trade tensions for more than two years, which have spilled into technology and to some extent into finance. As the world struggles to emerge from the coronavirus pandemic, ensuring the future of the local automotive industry is even more critical for both economies. Right now, guys, remember, the US is actually subsidizing China's cars and China's industry because the US right now doesn't subsidize Tesla vehicles, right, that are made in China. And we now know that Model Y and Model 3 batteries are being made in America, but they don't subsidize Teslas. You buy Tesla in America and you get no subsidies. You buy a Ford in America, which is built in Mexico and the batteries come from China. What does the American government do? Oh, here you go. Here's a $7,000 grant. 
what do they do if you buy an Audi, right? Where's the Audi? Audi's a European company. The batteries come from either China or South Korea, and the government gives you 7,000 US dollars. Oh, wow, isn't that great? Europe benefits, China benefits, North South Korea benefits. Does America benefit? No. This has been going on now for a long time. In fact, GM also doesn't get subsidies on their EVs built in North America. I cannot understand why this is not front page news on American television. The fact that the United States is literally subsidizing the EV, the cars from Europe, China, and South Korea, and Japan. What are they thinking? I don't know. Now, in the US, the automotive industry supports 10 million jobs and contributes nearly 3.5% of national GDP. According to the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Republicans, China Task Force report, which came out last year on September 29. Now, in China, the auto sector accounts for about one sixth of jobs and roughly 10% of retail sales, according to official figures for 2018 compiled by the Ministry of Commerce. Now, we know that China wants to double that, bringing up that up to 20% of their economy. This is so significant. China is very aware of how significant. In just one sign of how far ahead China has progressed in EV development, out of 142 lithium-ion battery manufacturers under construction globally, 107 are set for China. 107 out of 142 factories versus only nine in the United States. 107 versus nine. Across the industry, automakers will spend at least 500 billion over the next decade, and half of this will be in China. Now, China's push into EVs began just over a decade ago, spearheaded by a former engineer for Audi named Wan Gang. While more than 30 billion yen or $5 billion in subsidies attracted many worthless startups, a handful of good ones survived. NEO listed in New York in 2018 and has climbed more than 400% since Lee Auto and x went public in the US this year and their shares are up more than 65 and 50% respectively. Now Shenzhen listed Cato shares, CATL, are up more than 120% this year, while Hong Kong listed shares of Warren Buffett listed invested BYD have soared more than 250% to record highs after the release of its in-house blade battery technology, which is primarily used in the company's newly popular Han luxury sedan. Now the blade battery is better than you think because it's almost impervious to fire and lithium ion phosphate batteries are very affordable, very cheap, and they've improved significantly. BYD says this battery will last for 1 million kilometers. Not all that different to Tesla's battery. Obviously, the energy density is lower, but in an area where price is very sensitive and matters so much, this battery is actually very, very significant. Now, US dependence on OPEC at its height in the 40% that OPEC produced of world oil was never as high as it is currently and is likely to be on China if we do nothing on China with EV and its component parts, SAFE President and CEO Robbie Diamond told CNBC in a phone interview recently. As an organization, we don't want to go from dependent and facing a national security, economic security risk based on the Middle East and OPEC to then a problem I'm dependent on batteries and transportation technology from China. As it's trending right now, there is absolutely no doubt the United States is headed to full dependency on China for batteries. Not the entire market, but a very large percentage will be. So through deals with mines and other industry players, China has secured the minerals and key materials for battery production for at least the next five years, said Hei Hui, senior researcher on China's new energy policy at the International Council on Clean Transportation. He's not saying that as a mouthpiece for Beijing, by the way. He's an objective observer. Now, he, we said there is relatively more cross-border collaboration among manufacturers in the electric vehicle industry so far, and that the future of the industry going forward will rely more on making batteries cheap enough so that consumers will want to switch over to electric cars. Remember, batteries need to be cheap enough so that consumers will want to switch over to electric cars. Who is making batteries cheap? CATL and BYD. Now, analysts generally expect that within two years, by 2023, EVs will be price comparable with petrol and diesel powered vehicles, meaning they'll be far, far cheaper 
to own, run, and purchase over the life of ownership. Of course, EV batteries last far longer than a comparable petrol or diesel vehicle, which lasts on average 275,000 kilometers. New EV batteries will last at least a million kilometers, meaning, of course, the car will last far longer if you purchase an EV. If the price is the same, you're saving a huge amount of money in the long run. It's not long before consumers will realize this and make the switch to EVs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.